What's up, guys? It's the crazy life of Jake and wife, and we got Brookston, my boy, and today we're talking about how we built the fastest Pinewood Derby car, and what place did we take? First. Took first place. This is the car. This is how we uh, designed the car. We'll tell you the reasoning behind the design, what we did with polish and the axles, the weight placement, and uh, how we took first, and we're going to go show you how we did it. Check it out. So this is how we polish the axles. You'll notice the stock axles that come on the Pinewood Derby kit, they have these two little ridges. And then on the interior of it, you also have these two ridges that are on the flat surface. Those we're gonna mill off, which you'll watch right now, using the drill press and a file. And then we'll move into how that works and how we set this up to make them so they're the fastest. When I chuck this up in the drill press, I don't use a lot of force. We're gonna put it in the drill press just by hand tight. Just enough to where the axle's just barely sticking out. And we're gonna start by removing some of the burrs with a file. This is my fine file. You'll notice I'm just using the side of the file, just slightly, to make sure we, re to make sure we remove the little burrs. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the flat part of the head and the little burrs that are on the side right here. Now I'm not using very much pressure as we do this. We're gonna use very little pressure to just make sure we get that flat and those and those two little ridges off. Right now I'm making sure that the the portion of the head that's flat, I'm going to make sure that that is completely flat. Now as you run through with the file here, just take your time, don't push a ton of pressure into it because you'll leave a lot of grooves, and you'll take off a lot more than you think just with a little bit amount of pressure. Now this doesn't take very long. I think we're about done actually. So if you notice, that didn't take too long. I think we spent maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds on this, and that was it. Now you'll notice the little burr on top and the little ridges are gone. Now we're gonna move on to actually polishing and sanding the axle itself. I'm using strips of 400 grit sandpaper first. We have 1,000 grit sandpaper. We've got them cut into little strips like this. And then we're gonna move on to 2,000 grit sandpaper as well. And then to finally polish it off, to finally polish it off, what we're gonna be using is a little bit of steel wool. I'll show you how that's done and the difference how it looks before and then after. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip the sandpaper itself into some water to get it wet. And then we're gonna start by just polishing it around like this. I'm gonna let the drill press do the work just by letting it spin and then move this back and forth. Now I do push down <clears throat> a little bit on the, now I do push down on the head to make sure we get that bottom portion where those two little ridges were, kind of smoothed off as well. Moving on to the 1000 grit sandpaper. And then we're gonna move on to the 2,000 grit sandpaper. And then for the final, for the final polish, I always use this fine steel wool. It seems to give it a really clean polish on the end. Now, of course, I've seen a lot of people move up to glass platens and a whole bunch of other stuff to get it a mirror, mirror, mirror polish. But truthfully, I've noticed after the steel wool, you never actually have to go much more than that. It's been extremely polished at that point, and it looks, looks great. Whew. 
So now if you notice, you'll be able to see that those ridges have been removed. You can see the polished area is pretty, pretty substantial, and this hasn't even been cleaned yet. So let's move in and check out how we go from here. Okay, we're gonna go back to a couple portions on the axle itself. So this again, is, this again is another tool that we got from Maximum Velocity. There's a couple pieces to this. You'll notice there's two different sides. There's a side that has a concave and a side that is flat. Right off the bat, we're gonna stick the axle in the side that's flat. We're gonna put it in flush. We're gonna smack it with a hammer. We're gonna take it, rotate it a little bit, put it back in, smack it with a hammer a few more times to make sure that the wheel, it, I mean the axle itself is extremely straight. Then what's gonna happen is we're going to go take it and put it on this other side with the concave bit. When we put it on the concave side, we're going to put this on the floor of the garage, on the concrete, smack the top of the axle here. What that's going to do is going to cone the axle. So instead of being flat here on the top, instead of having a flat top like that, that's going to just rub on the wheel itself with higher surface area, we're going to cone the axle. And when the axle's coned, you're gonna have just a small point rubbing on this axle portion of the wheel, which is gonna give you the least amount of friction possible. So right here, this is how we cone the axle. We put it in that side of the jig that's coned. And we're gonna get a few small taps. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this, pull it out and rotate it about a half, a, a half turn so that these grooves inside this do not leave grooves on the axle head itself. So we're gonna turn that, we're gonna hit it again. One more time, we're gonna take it, turn it a little bit, put it back down. So that, that way when we're done, it doesn't leave any grooves in the head of the axle. And now, after that, the head of this axle will be coned. Okay, so now since we have the axle coned, polished, and this is all ready to be done, this is the final step that we're gonna put, and we're going to bend the axles. Now this tool is a portion of the tool that comes with this from maximum velocity. It's got two sides, you'll notice <clears throat> one side says two and a half degree, the other is one and a half degree. For this car, we're gonna bend it at two and a half degrees, but I've noticed, I think one and a half degrees is actually enough to get the wheels canted so that we don't have friction as we're riding on the track, and I'll show you that. The way that works is we're gonna go back to the, the side that's flat, not concaved, and we're going to put this in the two and a half degree bend. <clears throat> we're gonna make sure this is all the way in. First thing too, what we're gonna to wanna to do, which I always run, is we take a permanent marker and we mark this direction once it's been bent. So we're gonna put it in the bender, a few smacks. And bef before we take this out, the main thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we put a line on this axle with a permanent marker to show what bend it has. But if we look here, now you'll notice that very, very, very subtle bend two and a half degree bend, and I'll show you how that works on the car to make sure that we are riding on the very edge of the wheel to create the least amount of friction possible. All right, now let's go over a couple of the tools that I've been using to make sure we get the axles polished, the wheels trued, which is extremely important, which we'll show you that in a second. But these are the tools that we've been using. Um, I got them from a place called MaximumVelocity.com. They sell just parts for Pinewood Derby. And so right here, this is the wheel uh, truing kit. The way this works with the wheel truing kit, there's two pieces to it, and it all it all comes in the same kit. You have this piece here, which the wheel itself is going to go on, which has got the perfect size to fit in. The, it has the perfect size to fit in the wheel hole. This goes into the wheel truing kit with the wheel on top. Okay, so what we do with this por portion of the wheel truing kit, there's this little blade that will twist out. And we're gonna twist this out until it just barely, barely, barely touches the wheel. 
Once that barely touches the wheel, we're going to start to spin it. And you'll notice these little shavings come off. And so we're going to twist the wheel just a tiny bit tighter and we're going to go around again. We're going to continue to do that until the wheel itself, you don't see any more scuff lines across it. So you'll notice it's really tight there and it's taking off quite a bit of shavings at this point. And then it doesn't take any shavings. And then it'll start to shave it again. And again, we're going to continue to just tighten this up slightly. And then continue to twist the wheel, take off a few more shavings here. Until you get around and there's no more shavings. Now we're going to continue to do that and you'll notice right here, you can see the, the part that's dull and then the part that's shiny. That's the part that the wheel's been shaved. This is the part where it hasn't been shaved yet. We're going to continue to shave it until that wheel looks entirely shiny the whole way across. So that way we know it's actually perfectly round instead of oblonged. And we'll move on to the next step from here. Okay, so once we have the wheel perfectly round and trued up, what we're going to do is we're now going to make sure that the interior of the wheel, because we're going to set it up as a rail rider, is also nice and flat. The way we're going to do that is we're going to extend the blade pretty much all the way out to its max. <clears throat> then, what we're going to, then what we're going to do is we're going to slide this in until it just barely touches that side of the wheel. Then we'll tighten it. And then what happens, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start shaving this. Now you'll notice here, we're going to start shaving the interior of the wheel. Now you'll notice it's taken a few shavings from the interior of the wheel on this side. The reason why we do that is if there's any burrs or anything that's been left on this interior portion, it's going to remove those. It's also going to make sure that it is straight. So that way while we're rail riding on the way down that we're not going to be bouncing all over the track. So let's move on to the next step now of making sure we polish the, uh, the hubs on the interior of the wheel and kind of the inside of the wheel itself. We want to make sure that stays polished and we'll move on to that step and the tools that we use for that. Okay, so this here is the wheel mandrel that we put in a drill and this is how we're going to be able to spin the wheel and polish it up. The same concept that we did with the axle using the sandpaper and the steel wool. I generally just use the steel wool. So the wheel is going to jump on to the wheel mandrel. It, it fits perfectly, which is really nice to make sure it doesn't ruin the alignment or anything like that. Tighten this on. Once this is chucked into the drill, we're going to finish smoothing this out with the 400 grit or 1000 grit up to 2000 grit. And then again, just the steel wool to make sure that the wheel itself is polished and clean and that there's no imperfections. So that way as it's riding down the rail, we're going to get an extremely smooth finish and be the fastest car on the track. Okay guys, now I'm going to go over how we actually polish the internals of the wheel itself so that it is glossy smooth so that as we're running down the track, we are getting the fastest numbers we can get. I start with just a Q-tip. I'm going to cut the Q-tip in half. And on this one, I pull all the cotton off the, off the head of the one side. I've noticed if you pull all the cotton off the head of the one side, it fits pretty tightly, but not overly tight, into the, uh, the hole of the wheel. So this is what we do. We're going to chuck this up in a drill. And this is how we start. And this is going to sound crazy to people, but we run pledge which is furniture polish. We put just a tiny bit onto the Q-tip. Now make sure you have a towel or something where you want to be here <clears throat> because graphite is your next most important thing and graphite gets everywhere and it will stain anything that it hits. So we're going to put a little bit of graphite on top of the uh, Q-tip itself. Once that's all graphited up, 
Then we are going to drill this on a s slow speed through the wheel. And we're just gonna keep spinning this. You'll hear it squeak, which is okay. That's why we use the furniture polish. Now you'll notice it's like a perfect fit with the Q-tip. When you remove just the head of the cotton off the Q-tip, it's like a perfect fit. Now, since we've gone through it a little bit, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit more graphite on top of this. If the graphite's not sticking, just tap it with a tiny bit more pledge again, and the graphite will stick to the top. And then we're gonna, again, we're gonna keep going. When we're done with this, you'll be able to see, the camera won't pick it up, so I'm just gonna tell you, when we're done with this, you'll be able to see the interior of the hub on the wheel here is like glassy smooth. You don't wanna see any imperfections, you wanna make sure you don't see any bumps or scratches, and you want it to have the same color as the graphite itself. Now I'm gonna move on to the next step that we want. So I'm gonna take this one out that we removed the cotton end on. Now keep the one that we have the cotton on, I'm gonna chuck this one up into the drill. Same thing, I'm gonna grab some pledge furniture polish, give it just a little tap on the top and the sides of the cotton itself. And now we're going to throw more graphite on top of this cotton swab. Now you can never use too much graphite. Sometimes, like I say, it gets everywhere. So I've got a big mound of graphite on the top of this. I'm gonna put it just on the hub of the wheel, right in the center, which is where the portion that it's gonna rub onto the axle. Now, if you remember, we just coned the axle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it just in the center of the axle here. I'm gonna do the back side as well. Now when you're done with this, now when we're done with this, you'll notice that the head of the wheel itself is actually all polished. It's all gray as if, of course, you've put a ton of graphite on it, which is exactly what we did. But that's gonna create the least amount of friction. Now we haven't graphited any of the rest of this. We haven't graphited the axle or anything. We've polished the axle. Remember, our axles are finished now. So we've polished the axle, we've bent it at two and a half degree. We've coned the axle, which is really important. Now watch this. As we come in here, we haven't done anything yet. We're gonna spin this, and generally what I do, even without graphite, I'm gonna make sure that this continues to spin for about 10 seconds. And in fact, it's still, it's still spinning. So we have just barely stopped. We have not graphited it or polished it or anything else more than just that. After that part's been done, now I'm gonna go back with the graphite. I'm gonna hit the top right where the axle itself goes in, create a little bit of a tower, of course, and then we just twist this until it gets like a real nice polish. I'm gonna tap the graphite back into the middle. And then I'm gonna spin that, spin that off. Oh my goodness, you can already, you can already hear the difference and we, we haven't, even, haven't even done much more than that. So I'm gonna put a little graphite there and then I'm gonna go to the back side Throw a little bit of graphite in the back as well. Let that kind of tap down. Now with the fine graphite, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do kind of get it worked into the axle and the wheel itself. And then give some spins. And look at, look at this wheel. The wheel's screaming. So once that's been done, you've polished the axles, you've coned the axle, I've noticed that's huge. We've now trued the wheel to make sure the wheel itself is actually round and not oblonged. And that is gonna make a ripping car. I've noticed that alone, just by working on the axles and the wheels, is probably one of the biggest keys to helping the cars run super fast. The last thing that was extremely important is weight placement and the design of the car. So we'll jump onto that, show you exactly how we did it. 
how we uh, took first place. Now, when I say we, of course, I'm talking about my son's Pinewood Derby, which we all know dads are the ones that build the car, and one day our sons will grow up to be big enough to where they will finally build their own car. So it's pretty exciting, pretty fun for us. But uh, let's jump onto the design of the car, how we built it, why we built it this way, and uh, how, we, how we won with this design. Okay, so you'll notice as we get on some of these shots right here, you're going to notice how these axles themselves are bent. The reason for the bend is you're going to be able to see how they are barely touching the table. Just the very edge of the wheel itself is actually riding on the track. That's going to create the least amount of friction possible, which is awesome. The other thing is because of these are canted out, as it's going down the track, it's going to force the wheels themselves out to the edge, which is going to make it so we have the least amount of friction possible because, again, we're riding on those coned-headed axles. So that coned edge is going to put the least amount of friction possible just on the edge there. Okay, so now we're on the front wheels. You'll notice this wheel's bent the opposite direction. It's actually bent down to raise this other wheel. You'll notice as we spin this side, that wheel doesn't actually touch the ground. The reason for that is we're going to be riding on three wheels to make sure we have the least amount of friction possible going down the track. It's pretty cool. So this is a free floater. We're going to turn this into a rail rider as well. And that's again why on this particular side, you'll notice it's canted the opposite direction. I turn the nail the other direction. So instead of up, it's down, which forces that other wheel up. So here I'm just going to give you a little more profile of the car. So if you decide you wanted to make something similar, you can. That's where we keep our weight. Now what I did to design the car, I actually took a piece of paper, cut it the same size as the block of wood. I folded it in half, and then I drew basically half the car. And then I cut it out. So when I unfolded it, I had a perfectly symmetrical car. Anyway, now let's go over why we built it this way and how we weighted it for what reason. So what we did is we have a tungsten domed weight right here at the end. The tungsten dome weight we just bought off of Amazon, uh, kind of an expensive weight. But nonetheless, the reason for the design is we put all of the weight to the rear of the car, which is about uh, about an inch in front of the, the axles. And then we have as little weight possible up in the front of the car. We wanted no weight in the front of the car. The reason why, which if you watched Mark Rober's video, which I'm sure you have because everybody's going to watch his video to see the fastest pine wood, you'll notice the rear of the car's weight, as it excels down the track, you basically have six inches more of acceleration time than a car that's weighted in the front. Because as we run down the track, as soon as we hit the track, any car that's been weighted in the front <coughs> is done accelerating. Whereas all the cars that are weighted in the rear are continue accelerating for just that little bit of push action. And we've noticed as we ran these races, which you'll see, the car came down the track similar with the other cars. And as soon as it hit the bottom, it kind of slingshotted and launched this car about a whole two car lengths ahead of the other cars. So weight placement was extremely important. And then I think the biggest next thing to do is uh, polish the axles, the wheels, cant the wheels, and then we did run it up as a rail running car. Okay, just a few final thoughts on the car. As you saw the car there sitting uh, with the canted wheels, you noticed one wheel we had up off the ground. We actually took one wheel, and instead of having the cant in, direct, in this direction like we did the rear wheels, we canted one wheel the opposite direction on the front, which lifted the one side off the ground. The reason for that is we have one less wheel which has rotating mass going down the track, so that should be faster. And it's gonna help me steer the car. Now we have specific pliers that came from maximum velocity as well, which are pretty unique. They're literally just for axles themselves. And you'll notice, you'll notice these pliers With the pliers, they hold onto the axle perfectly. How this works with these pliers is it gives you perfect spacing. So when you hold onto the when you hold onto the nail, you you put that into the car. You put it in until it stops. When you let go of the axle, it now has just enough play for the wheel to be exactly where we need it for. Uh, of course, no friction, not too tight, but at the same time, not too wobbly. The other nice thing is with these pliers, you can come on to the axle, slightly turn it in or out, which is going to make the car turn for rail riding effect or not. Now, when you set this up as a rail rider, uh, watch Mark Rober's video or some of these other guys' video. 
They take a board, which we did the same thing. We take a board that's about six feet long. We run a line down the center and then we tilted it up about two inches is all. And we let the car run down it. Now, all we wanted it to do is we wanted that wheel on the outside to barely touch the line by the time it got to that six foot end. So it moved in about an inch to an inch and a half by the end of that six feet. Once we did that, it's just enough for a rail rider. You'll see on the videos how this car uh, set some new track records, which was awesome. And my son was, of course, extremely excited that we were able to build a car this fast and take first place. And anyway, I hope this video helped you guys in the future. I hope you guys can win your next Pinewood Derby. If you take those few simple things that we talked about today into account, I'm sure you'll have an extremely fast car, hopefully number one. If not, you'll definitely be up there within the top three. Anyway, I appreciate you guys staying along, seeing all the crazy things we do here, and in the end, that's why we call it the crazy life. Uh -huh.